let's welcome David Rapchons. Uh, he's our next speaker. <laughs> David is the CEO of Modic Quest, a, a company that has an interesting promise, custom curated brand strategy, growth strategy, and big data insights from online consumer research. They will present a case on McDonald's. Thanks very much. Hello, Thank everybody. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw the chart this morning where everybody goes to sleep right before lunch. That's the worst time you could possibly present. Well, we're the lucky ones. But I brought my cup of coffee because this is a story about that moment when you have a cup of coffee and you smell it and you're transported away just for a moment in time to another place. You think of that mum after she's dropped her kids off at school. And she's just, you know, it's been a crazy morning. She's been running around. And she finally has a little moment of peace in her day. It's also a story about how you can use advocacy analytics, the study of how people are recommending online to drive your sales up. And it's a story about a challenger brand in a really tough coffee category coming in and trying to find a new way to grow their business. That brand, of course, is McCafe. And everybody knows that uh, McDonald's has been having quite a tough time of it. And so the challenge at the beginning was to try and work out how can we grow advocacy for McDonald's and how can we grow sales for McCafe. Uh, we have a, a system we've been using for a while that looks at online advocacy and correlates it very highly with sales. So we developed this with Northwestern University. And this chart shows you um, that over the last 24 months, online advocacy, like a net promoter score, recommendation, ties directly into sales. But it's not enough to know that advocacy ties to sales unless you can understand how to grow that advocacy and how to drive that advocacy forward. So one of the things we found very helpful is advocacy segmentation. And what this chart shows you is a way you can divide that up. This is about 300,000 individuals talking about McDonald's. And what you're able to do is break them into buckets. So when we first did this piece of analysis, about 15% of the people talking about McDonald's hated the brand. They were the detractors. Uh, we saw that in the media. You, you've probably seen that yourselves. These are people that don't shop the category. They'll never like McDonald's. They'll never go to the store. They hate everybody in the fast food category. Over on the other side, you've got 21% of the people talking about McDonald's who love the brand, are recommending the brand to their friends, and are actually taking their friends into the store. So understanding these two sides of the coin and making sure you're allocating your dollars and your energy to those two different groups in different ways is really crucial. And of course, those switches, just like with politics, you're trying to work out how can you get more votes for your brand? How can you pull more people in? With the McCafe brand, the good news was that we had even more advocates for McCafe. Um, McCafe had, had launched uh, you know, several years ago. They put a lot of money into the brand. They really had a, a quality issue for a while that they'd fixed. And now people were really talking to each other and saying, hey, this McCafe uh, coffee is really good. The products are really good. They're as good as Starbucks. You should try it out. And so we were trying to understand, well, what's really going on with that 27%? Why do they love McCafe? And how can we communicate that to the other groups to get them to come in and buy McCafe coffee? Now, while within the McDonald's world we were doing well with McCafe, if you look at the grand scheme of things, if you look at it in the category, one of the things you notice is you know, Starbucks has got five to one as many advocates in the category as McCafe does. So obviously, it's a, a fairly challenging environment. You know, you've got a ways to go in this category. And so one of the questions you ask yourself is, well, what matters to people in coffee? What matters to advocates in coffee? And this quantification of those advocates was really helpful. Obviously, people are drinking coffee for a pick-me-up, a boost of energy. They're drinking coffee uh, for a social event. Um, but the biggest reason people were drinking coffee was that moment of time, that little sniff of the coffee, that drink, that pause, that time for themselves, that me time. And when we looked at where the brand sat, we saw that Starbucks very clearly was highly indexed against that idea of social coffee. Um, they'd been doing the third space campaign for quite a while. And they were really featuring people coming together in their coffee shops, which was great. They owned that space. 
Very encouragingly, when we looked at those McDonald's advocates, we found that they were highly indexed against that moment of me time. It was the me time that really is what got them turned on um, about going to McDonald's. And maybe it's the drive through after the kids have been dropped off at school and you're just going having that little pause, that little moment for yourself. And so we took that, that insight and we said, how can we help turn Muck Cafe into Meat Cafe? And with that, Caroline's going to talk about how McDonald's did that. Thank you. So hi, everyone. My name is Carolyn O'Mara. At the time of this research, I was actually the category manager for McCafe, and now I'm director of planning and strategy for McDonald's. So thank you for having me join you up here. Um, what a phenomenal thing to learn that your brand actually owns one of the biggest emotional spaces out there, and by default, actually, because when this brand launched in 2007, it was really designed to kind of democratize the coffee experience. So you had some very powerful um, coffee house players, and you had a lot of people who want to experience coffee but didn't really quite know how to approach it. And so that was really the position that McCafe launched in back in 2007. And then it was a series of product launches, so it became very product attribute, very functional, and we really hadn't made that emotional connection. So when you take information like this, which is real-time share of conversation, and you have something as strong as me time, how do you parlay that into your business strategy and planning? So that really became our focus for 2014. And so there were really three business strategies that rose to the top as a result. <clears throat> and the first one was customers really want flavored coffee. Um, so how do we build that product line? The second one is really how do you build on that me time experience? And when people are talking about it, they're often associating it with food. And that happened to be baked goods. So how do we rise that in our menu pipeline and make sure that we have that offering? And then how do we build that unique coffee, or unique, uh, coffee culture? So as David had referenced, Starbucks really owned that idea of social gathering. And we own the, time, or the, the concept of me time, which really, if you think about McDonald's, people have used McDonald's as a way to reward themselves and take a break for years. So it's really not that much of a differentiation from the brand itself. So when we go back to look at partnerships, we obviously have a great partnership with Kraft. They are a phenomenal product company. And so they have worked with us to develop um, a line of flavored coffees that will, uh, are in retail right now. In fact, 80% of coffee is consumed at home. So what better way to build credibility and reach is to drive that through Kraft. So you can see that the idea of me time is even driven online by this particular blogger and her little uh, vignette here of me time through McCafe Coffee at home. So it continues through that partnership. The second one is food and coffee. Um, you can see that when people talk about food, obviously our breakfast sandwiches fall in about 1% of conversations. And the majority of conversations happens around baked goods. So what is great is that we actually have fully functioning kitchens in our restaurant. We don't have to set up a supply chain through a commissary and have deliveries that way. We can actually bake fresh in our restaurants every day. So this real-time conversation that we learned through our partnership with MotiveQuest helped us elevate that product development and get that moving into our restaurants even faster. So today, about 30% of our restaurants sell some kind of baked good. And then this is really the piece that kind of gets into the culture of it. So we spent a lot of time last year, obviously, doing a lot of promotional activity to get people to try our coffee again. But we really wanted to talk about the me time. So um, this is one of my favorite spots. This, um, I'll stop since it's going here, but I think there's sound. When I, will you we keep my heart out of the cold? Wrap me in your arms when I shiver. Will you keep me warm this winter? Warm up to winter with a white chocolate delight from McCafe. So it's the expression of me time through that moment of respite and kind of enjoying the espresso drink. And I'm going to come to share uh, data later on, but I want to I want to just pause for a second because obviously, in the winter time, you see a ton of flavored coffee and activity from a lot of competitors. We actually had reduced the number of offerings last year in the marketplace because of um, simplification efforts at our restaurants. So we really focused in on this white chocolate piece and the idea of me time. And so I think that's really critical as we kind of look at how Share tracked um, last year what that did for us. That ad actually ranked in the top second or the second tier um, within IEO spots. 
Um, the drivers of effectiveness uh, were persuasion and watchability, which is really unique, especially for a coffee product. Um, purchase intent was about 62%. And in fact, we did grow share in a growing category of a half a percent. So that really did work hard for us with that insight there. Um, but MeTime really came to life on Twitter. It really came to life on our social media. And so here's an example of a variety of different um, tweets that we did last year. And the stain on the shirt in the middle there and the girl running in the bottom, you can see had the highest impressions and engagement rate because they're based in organic content. They're based in that idea of using coffee in the way that you want to in your lifestyle to kind of enable you know, what your goals are for the day or even at that moment. So this is the coffee share. So blue is 2014, and you can see that with the, um, the testing of me time and the application, we really were able to grow share much more strongly than 2013. As I mentioned, in fourth quarter there, we see a dip. And that's because, obviously, we weren't running TV in December, and we had fewer products than we did the last year in the marketplace. But I think what's important to note is that we didn't lose share. We didn't drop below year-over-year -year, um, metrics. And I really think that's because we were able to drive that emotional connection through this. So as David always says, know your tribe and stay true to them. And I think this uh, research really helped us do that. So we will answer any questions if we have time. I think we have time for one question. There's one. Go ahead. Um, so have you ever done any uh, sort of photo recognition around the space, on the, the quick term restaurant space, to find out sort of the kinds of images and things that people are posting around McDonald's as well? To get enough? I don't think we've officially done that, but obviously we're beginning to mine a lot more social media and kind of understand how customers use the brand. Our relationship with Kraft, they do that a lot as well, so um, you can see that there's a lot of organic content out there, but I, you know, I think that's part of what we'll begin doing more frequently. There's a bit of a sell story question because we did a test last year. Okay. Yep. And then we got to McDonald's, it was all around coffee. Coffee. Right. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Caroline and, and David, for this presentation. Great, thank you.